Welcome to part 2 of this video documentary, about the fantastic hummingbirds. If you watched part 1, then you know what to expect, a lot of great information and wonderful video clips of the beautiful hummingbirds. In this part 2 of the video documentary, I will cover the following subjects, diet and specialization for food gathering, kidney function, metabolism, torpor, evolution, song and vocal learning, humming. Let's start with talking about their diet. For nutrition, hummingbirds eat a variety of insects, including mosquitoes, fruit flies, gnats in flight, or aphids on leaves and spiders in their webs. The lower beak of hummingbirds is flexible and can bend as much as 25 degrees when it widens at the base, making a larger surface for catching insects. Hummingbirds hover within insect swarms in a method called hover hawking to facilitate feeding. To supply energy needs, hummingbirds drink nectar, a sweet liquid inside certain flowers. Like bees, they are able to assess the amount of sugar in the nectar they drink, they normally reject flower types that produce nectar that is less than 10% sugar and prefer those whose sugar content is higher. Nectar is a mixture of glucose, fructose, and sucrose, and is a poor source of other nutrients, requiring hummingbirds to meet their nutritional needs by consuming insects. Hummingbirds do not spend all day flying, as the energy cost would be prohibitive, the majority of their activity consists simply of sitting or perching. Hummingbirds eat many small meals and consume around half their weight in nectar, twice their weight in nectar, if the nectar is 25% sugar, each day. Hummingbirds digest their food rapidly due to their small size and high metabolism, a mean retention time less than an hour has been reported. Hummingbirds spend an average of 10 to 15 percent of their time feeding and 75 to 80 percent sitting and digesting. Because their high metabolism makes them vulnerable to starvation, hummingbirds are highly attuned to food sources. Some species, including many found in North America, are territorial and try to guard food sources, such as a feeder, against other hummingbirds, attempting to ensure a future food supply for itself. Additionally, hummingbirds have an enlarged hippocampus, a brain region facilitating spatial memory used to map flowers previously visited during nectar foraging. Hummingbird beaks are flexible and their shapes vary dramatically as an adaptation for specialized feeding. Some species, such as hermits, Phaethonus spp, have long bills that allow them to probe deep into flowers with long corolla. Thorn bills have short, sharp bills adapted for feeding from flowers with short corolla and piercing the bases of longer ones. The sickle bills extremely decurved bills are adapted to extracting nectar from the curved corolla of flowers in the family Gesneriaceae. The bill of the fiery-tailed orbill has an upturned tip, as in the avocets. The male tooth-billed hummingbird has barracuda-like spikes at the tip of its long, straight bill. The two halves of a hummingbird's bill have a pronounced overlap, with the lower half, mandible, fitting tightly inside the upper half, maxilla. When a hummingbird feeds on nectar, the bill is usually opened only slightly, allowing the tongue to dart out and into the interior of flowers. Hummingbird bill sizes range from about 5 mm to as long as 100 mm, about 4 inch. When catching insects in flight, a hummingbird's jaw flexes downward to widen the gape for successful capture. The dynamic range of metabolic rates in hummingbirds requires a parallel dynamic range in kidney function. During a day of nectar consumption with a corresponding high water intake that may total five times the body weight per day, hummingbird kidneys process water via glomerular filtration rates GFR, in amounts proportional to water consumption, thereby avoiding overhydration. During brief periods of water deprivation, however, such as in nighttime torpor, GFR drops to zero, preserving body water. Hummingbird kidneys also have a unique ability to control the levels of electrolytes after consuming nectars with high amounts of sodium and chloride or none, indicating that kidney and glomerular structures must be highly specialized for variations in nectar mineral quality. Morphological studies on Anna's hummingbird kidneys showed adaptations of high capillary density in close proximity to nephrons, allowing for precise regulation of water and electrolytes. With the exception of insects, 
Hummingbirds while in flight have the highest metabolism of all animals, a necessity to support the rapid beating of their wings during hovering and fast forward flight. Their heart rate can reach as high as 1260 BPM, a rate once measured in a blue-throated hummingbird, with a breathing rate of 250 BPM, even at rest. During flight, oxygen consumption per gram of muscle tissue in a hummingbird is about 10 times higher than that measured in elite human athletes. Hummingbirds are rare among vertebrates in their ability to rapidly make use of ingested sugars to fuel energetically expensive hovering flight, powering up to 100% of their metabolic needs with the sugars they drink, in comparison, human athletes maximize around 30%. Hummingbirds can use newly ingested sugars to fuel hovering flight within 30 to 45 minutes of consumption. These data suggest that hummingbirds are able to oxidize sugar in flight muscles at rates high enough to satisfy their extreme metabolic demands. A 2017 review indicated that hummingbirds have in their flight muscles a mechanism for direct oxidation of sugars into maximal ATP yield to support their high metabolic rate for hovering, foraging at altitude, and migrating. By relying on newly ingested sugars to fuel flight, hummingbirds can reserve their limited fat stores to sustain their overnight fasting or to power migratory flights. Studies of hummingbird metabolism address how a migrating ruby-throated hummingbird can cross 800 kilometers 500 miles, of the Gulf of Mexico on a non-stop flight. This hummingbird, like other long-distance migrating birds, stores fat as a fuel reserve augmenting its weight by as much as 100%, then enabling metabolic fuel for flying over open water. The metabolism of hummingbirds can slow at night or at any time when food is not readily available. The birds enter a hibernatory, deep sleep state, known as torpor, to prevent energy reserves from falling to a critical level. During nighttime torpor, body temperature falls from 40 to 18 degrees Celsius, with heart and breathing rates both slowed dramatically, heart rate of roughly 50 to 180 BPM from its daytime rate of higher than 1000 BPM. During torpor, to prevent dehydration, the GFR ceases, preserving needed compounds such as glucose, water, and nutrients. Further, body mass declines throughout nocturnal torpor at a rate of 0.04 grams per hour, amounting to about 10% of weight loss each night. The circulating hormone, corticosterone, is one signal that arouses a hummingbird from torpor. Use and duration of torpor vary among hummingbird species and are affected by whether a dominant bird defends territory, with non-territorial subordinate birds having longer periods of torpor. The hummingbirds of the Andes in South America are known for entering exceptionally deep torpor and dropping their body temperature. Hummingbirds are thought to have split from other members of Apodiformes, the insectivorous swifts, family Apodidae, and tree swifts, family Hemiprosnidae, about 42 million years ago, probably in Eurasia. Despite their current New World distribution, the earliest known species of hummingbird are known from the early Oligocene, Rupian 34 to 28 million years ago, of Europe, belonging to the genus Eurotroshulus, which is very similar in its morphology to modern hummingbirds. A phylogenetic tree unequivocally indicates that modern hummingbirds originated in South America, with the last common ancestor of all living hummingbirds living around 22 million years ago. A map of the hummingbird family tree, reconstructed from analysis of 284 of the world's 338 known species, shows rapid diversification from 22 million years ago. Hummingbirds fall into nine main clades, the topazes, hermits, mangoes, brilliants, coquettes, the giant hummingbird, mountain gems, bees, and emeralds, defining their relationship to nectar-bearing flowering plants and the birds continued spread into new geographic areas. While all hummingbirds depend on flower nectar to fuel their high metabolisms and hovering flight, coordinated changes in flower and bill shape stimulated the formation of new species of hummingbirds and plants. Due to this exceptional evolutionary pattern, as many as 140 hummingbird species can coexist in a specific region, such as the Andes range. 
The hummingbird evolutionary tree shows one key evolutionary factor appears to have been an altered taste receptor that enabled hummingbirds to seek nectar. The Andes Mountains appear to be a particularly rich environment for hummingbird evolution because diversification occurred simultaneously with mountain uplift over the past 10 million years. Hummingbirds remain in dynamic diversification inhabiting ecological regions across South America, North America, and the Caribbean, indicating an enlarging evolutionary radiation. Within the same geographic region, hummingbird clades co-evolved with nectar-bearing plant clades, affecting mechanisms of pollination. The same is true for the sword-billed hummingbird, Incifera incifera, one of the morphologically most extreme species, and one of its main food plant clades, Passiflora section taxonia. Consisting of chirps, squeaks, whistles and buzzes, hummingbird songs originate from at least seven specialized nuclei in the forebrain. A genetic expression study showed that these nuclei enable vocal learning, ability to acquire vocalizations through imitation, a rare trait known to occur in only two other groups of birds, parrots and songbirds, and a few groups of mammals, including humans, whales and dolphins, and bats. Within the past 66 million years, only hummingbirds, parrots, and songbirds out of 23 bird orders may have independently evolved seven similar forebrain structures for singing and vocal learning, indicating that evolution of these structures is under strong epigenetic constraints possibly derived from a common ancestor. The blue-throated hummingbird's song differs from typical assigned songs in its wide frequency range, extending from 1.8 kHz to about 30 kHz. It also produces ultrasonic vocalizations which do not function in communication. As blue-throated hummingbirds often alternate singing with catching small flying insects, it is possible the ultrasonic clicks produced during singing disrupt insect flight patterns, making insects more vulnerable to predation. The avian vocal organ, the syrinx, plays an important role in understanding hummingbird song production. What makes the hummingbird's syrinx different from that of other birds in the apodiforms order is the presence of internal muscle structure, accessory cartilages, and a large tympanum that serves as an attachment point for external muscles, all of which are adaptations thought to be responsible for the hummingbird's increased ability in pitch control and large frequency range. Now let us listen to the magnificent sounds of the hummingbird's song. A hummingbird is named for the prominent humming sound its wing beats make while flying and hovering to feed or interact with other hummingbirds. Humming serves communication purposes by alerting other birds of the arrival of a fellow forager or potential mate. The humming sound derives from aerodynamic forces generated by both the downstrokes and upstrokes of the rapid wing beats, causing oscillations and harmonics that evoke an acoustic quality likened to that of a musical instrument. The humming sound of hummingbirds is unique among flying animals, compared to the whine of mosquitoes, buzz of bees, and whoosh of larger birds. The wing beats causing the hum of hummingbirds during hovering are achieved by elastic recoil of wing strokes produced by the main flight muscles, the pectoralis major, the main downstroke muscle, and supracoracoideus, the main upstroke muscle. One can easily hear when there is a hummingbird nearby as this is the humming sound its wing beats make while flying and hovering. As this second part of the three-part series video documentary of the wonderful hummingbirds is coming to an end, let's watch some wonderful still photos of the fantastic and beautiful hummingbirds. I would also like to thank you all for watching and I hope that you found this second part of the Hummingbird video documentary inspiring, entertaining and interesting, and that you will come back to watch part 3 too, when it is released. Until next time, I wish all of you, all the best and stay safe.